Hello and welcome to another Doctor Who Big Finish video. Yes, it's that time of year again where I basically get a gym workout just by moving my Big Finish collection. Of course, it is my Big Finish collection for 2019. So, oh yes, how very exciting. Showing you all the lovely Big Finish I've got ever since I started getting Big Finish properly in 2014. Um, so we'll see how the collection has grown over the past year. And it's safe to say that it has grown because it's Big Finish. You know, we're basically getting free releases you know, a month and guarantee I'll probably buy them. And obviously July this year has been quite big because it's the 20th anniversary month for Big Finish and we've seen the Legacy of Time, the Further Adventures of Lucy Miller, the you know, the main range, uh, you know, to name but a few. We're, you know, this collection is going to be outdated within a month because we're going to have a whole new wave of audios out in August. So there we go. Um, so without further ado, let's let's get on with the main range. With so Cyrus kick-starting time. this Big Finish collection with the main range. Now since my last Big Finish collection, I have reached a milestone. I've managed to be all up to date with the main range. I've got Siren to Time right up until the Memories of a Tyrant, which is um, a wonderful achievement. So let's kick start with the Siren of Time. Now I have filmed a review of this, so don't really want to say too much on it because it will spoil the review. But I will say it's very ambitious. Uh, whether it's good ambitious or bad ambitious, you'll have to wait and see whether I think that it, it delivered the ambitiousness um, of it. But obviously it's celebrating, uh, you know, 20 years. Um, have Phantasmagoria, which I quite like. I listened to this one fairly recently, and I did enjoy it. So, yeah, I think that it's a, it's a good story by Mark Gatiss, and I'm, I'm a, I, I quite like Mark Gatiss's Doctor Who stories. And we have the Whispers of Terror. Um, now, this is very much Big Finish learning their craft, learning the sort of audio medium, because we have a, a, a monster um, entirely, you know, comprised of sound. I guess that's all Big Finish monsters, isn't it? Comprised of sound. Um, but yeah, this is them very much be able to be experimenting, getting used to the audio, you know, medium. So I think that this is a great story for them to really test the water of the audio uh, medium, which is quite nice. Land of the Dead, number four, um, which I listened to this one, I, I guess, a few months ago. And I listened to the first two episodes and I thought, yeah, it's, it's okay. But I never got around to finishing it. I don't know why. So I feel like I need to give this one another listen. Uh, so we have Fearmonger, which I love. I love it because it's a political story. It's a third Doctor uh, story with the Seventh Doctor and Ace. It's one of my favourite Seventh Doctor audios. It is, it's marvellous and I love it. Uh, it's brilliant. Um, so I recommend that. Uh, then we have the Marion Conspiracy. The, this is the story what I feel is the start of the Colin Baker master plan. This is the start of a, a softer Sixth Doctor um, because we see the introduction of Evelyn Smythe. And what a companion she is. I love Evelyn. She's great because she really mellows the sick doctor out. Having that sort of older, uh, older sort of companion really sort of, you know, keeps the doctor in check. And I love her. She's so brilliant. Um, and this is a wonderful historical story. And it was part of the Big Finish live stream. And I did listen to that again because I, I just love it. It's a wonderful historical story. And I remember seeing that one at school um, when we were doing about the Tudors. And I remember going, oh, there's a sick doctor Tudor story. How wonderful. Uh, so we have the Genocide Machine, which is the Seventh Doctor and Dalek story. Um, the first Dalek story Big Finish ever did, and it's pretty good. I'd give it a 7 or 8 out of 10. Uh, it's got a quite an interesting idea, and um, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed that one. Um, I do enjoy that one. And we have Red Dawn, the return of the Ice Warriors. I like it. I know not many people like it because it, it does some odd things, but... I really like it, maybe because I'm an Ice Warrior fanboy and I love anything with the Ice Warriors. Um, and I have stated in the past that I'm not a huge fan of the Fifth Doctor and Perry stuff and Eremim stuff because simply, because it lessens the Fifth Doctor's regeneration because the whole, you know, the, what makes the Fifth Doctor's regeneration very powerful and, and magical is that he's laying down his life to a complete stranger and if you count all of the Big Finish stuff it kind of lessens that regeneration for me in a way but i i do like that one i mean i'm gonna say that's a, an exception and another story later on spectre of lanyon moor i i love it i really love it because i like i like stories where doctor who takes myths and legends and uh folklore and it puts a doctor who spin on it and i quite like it but i will say i'm not too fond of episode four i remember but yet yeah, it's worth just getting just for the sick doctor and brigadier interactions because it's marvelous and yeah, I just love, I, one thing that really strikes me is Evelyn walking through this sort of moor and there's, you know, it's covered in fog and there's this creature lurking in the in the fog and it, I, that just really, you know, stays with me quite well. Uh, Winter for the Adept, I, I think that it's okay. Um, not brilliant and not bad. The first episodes are, are decent. Here's a here's one of my favourites, The Apocalypse Elements, signed by Lala Ward. Um, I love it. Everyone says it's for Sick Doctor in the Time War 
and I can't argue with that. It is brilliant. It shows the sheer desperation of the Daleks, how far they will go to achieve victory. Um, even the Dalek mutants are absolute savages within it. it it's brilliant. I love it. It's one of my favourite uh, Big Finish Dalek stories, and it's very 1960s-esque for their plan. Um, so far as the Vulcan, again, it's uh, one of my favourites. It's again one of my favourites because I just love it. It's one of the early Big Finish stories I listened to. It's one of my favourite Seventh Doctor audios. Whether it beats the Fires of Pompeii, um, I'm not too sure because I watched that one recently as well. And I, I love Fires of Vulcan. It is brilliant. It's by Steve Lyon, so you know you can expect a really good story. Shadow of a Scourge. Um, I haven't listened to this one, um, but it is. I believe it's based off a of Virgin New Adventure. What never happened. Uh, then we have the Holy Terror, which I have listened to, uh, which is regarded as one of the Holy Trinity of Big Finish. And I, I like it. I think that it, it's quite nice how it starts off as quite a light comedic story, um, but it soon becomes quite dark and twisted, and it has elements like The Empty Child, but that's that's all I'm going to say. But it starts off as a comedy, but becomes sort of a black comedy in a way. The Mutant Phase uh, is okay. <laughs> that's all I can say on it. I don't really remember much about it. Storm Warning, um, it's very much Big Finish doing 90s Doctor Who. This is the first 8th Doctor audio, if you can't tell already. And it starts off the Charlotte Pollard Weber time thing. Um, but I'd say episode 3 and 4, it does become very 90s Doctor Who. What if Doctor Who was in the 90s? It becomes very sort of X-File-esque. Um, I'd give that a 7 out of 10, that story. Uh, Sword of Orion, I know not many people love it, but I, I love it. I think that it's great. It's the first Cyberman story. And it's brilliant. I think that it's wonderful and it does tie into the Cyberman Big Finish spin-off series. We have the Stones of Venice, which um, I think is probably the weakest of the first wave of Ape Doctor audios, personally. Um, I, I think that it's got some great ideas, like the whole idea of the last days of Venice before it sinks. Um, and I, I like it. I do enjoy it, but I feel like it suffers from padding. And it's quite, quite an interesting start because it doesn't start... Traditionally, we kind of get a little mini adventure in itself in the sort of pre-title sequence. Then we have Minuet in Hell, um, which, speaking of padding, it does have quite a bit of padding, this story, because the first episode is 43 minutes, and I believe that there was way more... The story was cut so much. So out somewhere out there, there is an extended edition of Minuet in Hell, which should be released because it's a Sprigadier and Eighth Doctor, and it is... I quite enjoy it. I feel like this is a guilty pleasure one for me, personally. Um... But yeah, um, what else can I say? It's kind of taking the mick out of audio-visual in a way because we've got um, Nick Briggs who plays the Doctor who played the Doctor on audio-visual so it's kind of a wink and nod back to that. Then we have Lugaru, which again, I quite like it because it's kind of folklore, Doctor Who folklore with sort of this werewolf uh, character. Quite unsettling in places, I found. But yeah, I really did enjoy that one. And I'm, I'm, I've got a soft spot for the Fifth Doctor and Turlo stuff. Dust Breeding... Um, a return of another classic monster, which I'm not going to spoil, but I love the cover for it. Um, in episode 4, I'm not too keen on, um, but I love Caroline John in it, playing this very eccentric and extravagant art character. Wonderful, uh, wonderful stuff there. Uh, then we have Blood Tide, my first ever proper big finish and a proper CD case. I love it, it's controversial, but I think that it fits the Silurian's nature if you know the Silurians then you'll know that it does fit their character quite well the Silurians are quite brutal within it and I just love it I think that it is a wonderful story by Jonathan Morris then we have another one of my favorites Project Twilight now if you're a fan of my channel then you'll know that I will shout about this story from the rooftops it is magnificent it is basically the sixth doctor at his most desperate and bleakest situation because it sort of explores the Time Lord and Great Vampire War um, it is absolutely wonderful, it is brilliant, and it's the first reference to Zagreus. So that's a little fun fact for you, and it is brilliant, and it starts off the whole Forge um, arc, which is quite a prominent thing within the Doctor Who main range. And then we have Eye of the Scorpion, the introduction to Eremim. That's a good story. Um, Cold It, um, I, I like it, it's the introduction to Klein, and Klein becomes quite an integral character um, later on in the main range. Prime Evil, this is an underrated gem. I love it, it explains why Nyssa... Um, falls asleep in Kinder um, and it's got a great villain within it and we see the fifth Doctor and this go back to Traken and it is brilliant I think that this is one of the most underrated big finish stories from the main range we have the one Doctor um, that's a lot of fun that's the best way to describe it we have Invaders from Mars pretty good story then we have the Chimes of Midnight one of the big finishes Holy Trinity stories and it is brilliant it is a brilliant story um, by Rob Shearman it's wonderfully dark and twisted um, and Edith Thompson is a character you just feel so sorry for. She's just an absolute dear. It's a great exploration for Charlotte Pollard. Um, it's a great little murder mystery on how 
the servant characters or the characters within it die by their job um, and all I'll say is plum pudding but yeah it's a story what I do listen to every year especially around Christmas time and it's a story every time I listen to it I grow more appreciation for it. I do find it a tad overrated but it might sound a bit controversial but it's still a really good story and I, it's definitely worth checking out. We have Seasons of Fear, one of my absolute favourite McGann stories, it is brilliant. It's very much a sort of a William Hartnell-esque story, you know, it's kind of Keys of Marinus, Dalek's Master Plan, um, sort of that type of vibe. I'm trying to think what other stories it reminds me of. The Chase, it's very much like that because we've got this mysterious character called Grail saying, I've killed you Doctor, and it's basically the Doctor and Charlie going back going, how on earth did he do this? So it's, it's great. Um, and the villain within this, I feel like this is the first time Big Finish take a an underappreciated villain and turn it into something amazing and it is a brilliant story, I love it and I love how it just constantly seems so fresh and different, I love that. Uh, so with Embrace the Darkness, I think that that's a pretty good story, um, not not amazing but it, it's good, um, it's got kind of a creepy idea of people's eyes being ripped out but, but yeah, that, that's a really good bit. <laughs> Time of the Daleks, it's good, um, it's a story what you listen to thinking that was enjoyable and then you put it back on the shelf um, so I'd say that's about a 7 out of 10 that story then we have Neverland which I love the cover I think that it's a wonderful cover um, and I the one thing what I don't like about the story is the format it is a two-parter I feel like it kind of drags out a little bit for me but it's got quite an action-packed start with this sort of time torpedo bit but yeah and it does lead into Zagreus so there we are spare parts I love I love it it's what it's probably my favorite of the Trinity of Big Finish stories, I'll be honest, I, I just love it. Um, the Cybermen are well realised within it, um, and I just love it. I think that it is a really great bleak listening to story what will rip your heart out, um, and it's, it's brilliant, I love it. Uh, Mark Platt does a wonderful job of this story, it's brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I just love it, and the Cyberman police people are great. Ish, um, I have reviewed it, it's basically the Sip Doctor and Perry go to a sort of Comic Con for dictionary people, the Lexicon. And it's a murder mystery story. Um, so if you want to know more about my story, that story, then check out that review. The Rapture. No, forget that. <laughs> no, it's bad. I don't like it. Uh, the Sandman. It's quite interesting to see the sick doctor portrayed, well, the doctor portrayed as a villain. Uh, we have Church and the Crown. Um, I haven't listened to this one, actually. That's because I'm not too keen on the fifth doctor of Perry and Arrow and stuff, but I should get around to listening to that. Then we have Bang Bang A Boom. My god, I, I just can't stand it. It's one of my least favourite Big Finish stories. Jubilee, the inspiration for Dalek, but uh, it only has one scene, what is Dalek related. It's kind of a story what kind of takes the mick out of Dalek mania. I think that's the best way to describe it. It's a story what takes the mick out of Dalek mania, and it's, it's brilliant. Speaking of not brilliant stories, Necromantia. Um, oh, send the shivers down my spine, that story does. The Dark Flame. I love it. I think that it's it's a great story. Um, it's my first. It was my first taste of Bernie Summerfield, and I, I like it. I do like it. It's kind of a guilty pleasure that story. Doctor and the Pirate, or the Last but Lost a Sailor. Doctor Who does a musical, and it's a story what I can't really get behind. I don't really understand the hype for it, which I really want to love it, but I, I feel like I need to give it another go. I'll be honest. I'm not too keen on it. Creatures of Beauty, a story what is told in a non-linear order. You, could, you know, I think part one is essentially episode 4, if the story finishes where it begins. Um, so yeah, and, I, and that's what I like about Early Big Finish. Um, it's just so experimental, and I love it. Uh, Project Lazarus, the, sec you know, the second in the Project series, obviously following on from Project Twilight. Um, it's basically a multi-Doctor story, but not as you know it, that's all I'm going to say. First you know, two episodes of Sick Doctor and Evelyn, exploring the Forge, and then it's the Sick Doctor and the Seventh Doctor. And it kind of begins a sort of a character arc and sets up a certain Big Finish companion, which we'll get to later on. Uh, then we have Flip Flop, a story what you can listen to in either order. I'm not too keen on it. I just There's something about this story where I just cannot get into it, but I appreciate with what it's trying to do. Omega is pretty good. Davros, great exploration of Davros's character, and it's got some great scenes between the Sick Doctor and Davros. I feel like Terry Malloy and Colin Baker are just wonderful. If you get a story with the Sick Doctor and Davros, you're going to love it. Curse of Davros is another amazing one. Then we have Master, my favourite of the villain trilogy. It's just brilliant. It's kind of quintessential Seventh Doctor, that is. Then we have Zagreus. Yes, the mind-bending story, what it is. Um, this story gets extra points because it has John Pert... Uh, this story gets extra points because it has John Pertwee in it. So, yeah, that's why I like it a lot. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I do feel like I need to give that another listen because I did enjoy it. Um, but, yeah. Then we have the Wormery with Six Doctor and Iris Wild Time. 
We have Scherzo, which is just a classic. Probably my favourite Rob Sherman Big Finish story. It is amazing. It's a great exploration of the Charlotte Pollard and the Eighth Doctor's dynamic and exploring the Eighth Doctor. It's wonderful um, because he's just so hopeless within it and it's got a wonderful jump scare. So if you've got headphones and you listen to this, then RIP. It's a wonderful story and it kickstarts the Divergent series. Uh, then we have the Creed of Croman, which isn't so wonderful. It's probably one of my least favourite Big Finish stories. It's, it, I just don't like it. I genuinely can't get past you know, episode two, and I, I don't really want to go back to it. It's, it's not very good. Uh, Natural History of Fear. It's a story what can only be done on audio, um, and it's, it's a great little, great little story that is. Uh, Twilight Kingdom. Then we have the Axis of Insanity, which is an is an odd one. It's an odd story. I'll, I'll say that. Arrangements for War um, continues from where Project uh, Lazarus left off, and I really need to give this a listen um, because I've heard only good things about it, and I wanna I wanna say that I've experienced it because I know that it's gonna be a really good one. The Harvest, um, first time I listened to it, wasn't a fan of it, but now uh, I re-listened to it last year, and you know what? I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. And it introduces us to Hex. Uh, and then we have Roof of the World, which is meant to be a very much a companion chronicle-style story. Medicinal purposes, which I quite like. I do quite like that. The Faith Stealer, very interesting concept. The last, quite a bleak story. Then we have Care Droya. The Next Life, this is the last story in the Divergent series. Um, it's a six-parter. We have the Juggernaut, which is amazing. It's one of my favourite Sith Doctor audios. It's brilliant. The Game, which is a six-part story, but it's under two hours, I think, from memory. Uh, and it has William Russell in. Dreamtime, um, stay clear. It's not very good. Uh, Catch 1782, very good story for Mel. Then we have Freezer Crowd, which I haven't experienced. Uh, then we have Unregenerate, which is a bit of a guilty pleasure. I really do like that story. Uh, then we, we have the Council of Nicaea, which is a pure historical, which um, I did start listening to, but I just never went back to it. Then we have the first story of, with the Ape Doctor returning to our own world, which is Terra Firma, which is a really good story. Um, it's got a really nice, great twist and turns throughout with... Um, some mysterious companions, um, and it's, it's great. It's a really good story. Um, it's great to have. It's kind of the repercussion of Remembrance of the Daleks, that story. Uh, then, we're thicker of the, uh, then we have Thicker from Water. Then we have Thicker than Water, which is a follow-up from uh, uh, Rage of the War. Um, so I haven't listened to that one. Then we have Live 34, which is basically a radio broadcast, which I should give it another go. I'm not too fond on it from memory. Then we have Scaredy Cat, which is... Uh, it's okay, it's okay. Then we have Singularity, which I have the 10th Planet um, exclusive cover, which is rather nice, and it's a very much a cyber cyberpunk thriller, I want to say. Then we have Other Lives, which is one of my favourite pure historical stories. It is magnificent. Do check that one out, because it is a, it's a really good story, and it's a great story for Kerris. Pressure. Then we have Night Thoughts, which I love, because it's kind of quintessential 7th Doctor. It's quite grim, it's dark. And it's set in this very run-down house, and it's very twisted. Especially Happy the Rabbit, which, um, yeah. Um, and it's got a wonderful little dark twist involving a bear. Um, it's brilliant. It is a brilliant story. I really recommend that. And it was meant to be part of season uh, 27, I believe. Time Works, again, it was one of my first big finished stories, so I absolutely love it. It's a really great concept, and you can see how this would have fitted into the Divergent series. It, it's a brilliant story and a great concept using time. Then we have The Kingmaker, which is a lot of fun. It's by Nev Fountain, it's a brilliant story, and I highly recommend it, it's a really great story. Then we have The Settling, um, which I really do like. It's basically an island about the Civil War with Oliver Cromwell, and it's got some great little scenes involving Hex and Oliver Cromwell. It kind of sheds new light on Oliver Cromwell, uh, which is quite interesting. The Seventh Doctor delivers a baby within it, so what more can you want from a story? Then we have Something Inside, which is quite a twisted story. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoy it. It's nothing special, but it's, it's pretty solid. The Nowhere Place, a very good story. Um, I really did enjoy that story. Then we have Red, which uh, um, is uh, quite messed up. Um, then we have The Reaping, which I'm not too keen on. And this sort of, there's a bit of a trilogy with this. There's The Harvest, The Reaping, and The Gathering. Um, and I, I think that this is a good story for Perry, but I, it's, as a Cyberman story, it's not that great, I'll be honest. Uh, then we have The Gathering, which is quite a depressing story for Tegan, I'll be honest. Um, uh, Memory Lane, I think that this would have worked a lot better as a, as a three-parter. Um, it is a good story, and it's got a very good cover. I really like the cover for that. No Man's Land, brilliant story, did enjoy that one. Year of the Pig, uh, Circular Time, the first big finished anthology, I believe, and it's pretty damn good. It is a good story, that. Nocturne, um, I haven't listened to and I haven't heard that very good things about it. Renaissance of the Daleks. 
I can't stand it, I'll be honest, it's, uh, it's just, oh no. ID, then we have Exatron, then we have Valhalla, which um, I started listening to it and I did enjoy it, and I just don't know why I never went back to it, probably because another big finish release came out, I was like, oh, I'll listen to that instead, but I did enjoy Valhalla from my experience. Then we have the Wishing Beast, we have Frozen Time, which does have a classic monster within it, and yeah, it's a pretty good story. Son of a Dragon, amazing. It is a very good pure historical story, and I highly recommend it. It is brilliant. Then we have 100, the 100th release, aptly called 100. Um, yeah, anthology release. Then we have Absolution, the last three for careers, and it's not very good, I'll be honest. Then we have Mind's Eye. Then we have The Girl Who Never Was, which um, is the last story for Charlie with the Eighth Doctor, and it is signed by India Fisher. Uh, it's a pretty good story from memory. Then we have Bride of Paladin, which is the last story for Erimim, and it's very good. Then we have The Condemned, where we see the Sick Doctor and Charlotte Pollard uh, join forces together with DCI Menzies, and it's a really good story. I um, really do like that story. The Dark Husband, many people one of the worst big finished stories. The Haunting of Thomas Brewster, which is very haunting in places with this sort of nursery rhyme. Uh, then we have The Assassins in the Limelight, which has a character from Medicinal Purposes, and I believe uh, Peer Pressure. Then we have The Death Collectors, which I did enjoy, um, and this is kind of, this is where we kind of, we, some odd stories because we have sort of three part stories with a little bonus episode within it. Um, so we have the boy that forgot time, uh, which does have a returning companion, not gonna spoil it. Um, then we have the Doomwood Curse, and then we have the Kingdom of Silver, which links back to the Cyberman series. Then we have Time Reef with the Fifth Doctor and um, Thomas Brewster. Then we have Brotherhood of the Daleks. And then we have 45, an anthology release, which is pretty good. Then we have the Rain Cloud Man. The Key to Time 2 series with the Judgment of Iskar, the Destroyer of Delight, and then we have the Chaos Pool. Then we have the sort of start of the Black and White TARDIS trilogy with the Magic Mousetrap, which has a returning classic villain. And with the Daleks, which is fantastic, it's amazing. Then we have the Angel of Skatari, which is a wonderful pure historical, which leads into the next set of um, Hex stories, which, which leads into the next set of Hex um, stories, which is Project Destiny. Company of Friends, which is a great little anthology release with the Ape Doctor with various companions throughout his uh, life. Then we have Patient Zero. Then we have Paper Cuts with the Sick Doctor and Draconians. Then we have Blue Forgotten Planet. And then we have the Stockbridge Trilogy, which is amazing. The Castle of Fear, which is a Monty Python story with a returning classic Doctor uh, Who monster. Then we have the Eternal Summer, which is a great paradoxical story. And probably the weakest in the trilogy, Plague of the Daleks, but it is a really good story nonetheless. Speaking of another fantastic trilogy, the Klein trilogy, which I love. It's one of my favourite trilogies, actually. So if listen to Colditz and then listen to his trilogy, and you'll be in for an absolute brilliant time. Thousand Tiny Wings is a fantastic base under siege story. It is brilliant. It's one of my favourite Seventh Doctor audios. Survival of the Fittest is a pretty good story. It's a free part, and then we have the wonderful Klein story, um, which is a, again a brilliant little addition to the Klein um, series. And we have Architects of History, which is again another brilliant story. Then we have another trilogy which I really do like, which is the Sick Doctor and Jamie trilogy, uh, The City of Spires, which I love, I think that's a great story. Then we have Wreck of the Titan, again, another solid story. Then we have Legend of the Cybermen, where we see the Cybermen invade the land of fiction, and part one's cliffhanger is just utterly chilling. It is brilliant. Then we have Cobwebs, another fantastic release. Then we have The Whispering Forest. Then we have The Return of the Mara, The Cradle of the Snake. Then we have Project Destiny, which again is, is a good story. Then one of the classic Big Finish stories, Death in the Family, but do not listen to this without any prior context. You need to have the whole Forge um, series to really, you know, get the weight of the story and obviously experience Evelyn, because it is a really good story. Then we have Lurkers at Sunlight Edge, which is again another brilliant story, I really did enjoy that one. Demons of Red Lodge, I think it's a great little anthology release, I really did enjoy that one. Crimes of Thomas Brewster, again, really good story, did enjoy that one. Then we have The Feast of Axos, which I have listened to fairly recently. Well, I say re-listened to. It's basically The Sixth Doctor Does Claws of Axos. It's basically the same plot um, to that, actually. And it's a really good story. So if you love Claws of Axos, then you'll love that. It's basically Claws of Axos, but in space. And it's a really good story, actually. And it's got quite some... Part three's cliffhanger is very uh, tense, to say the least. Then we have Industrial Evolution. Heroes of Sontar, the first Sontaran story uh, Big Finish ever did. Then we have the Kiss of Death. Then we have Rat Trap. Then we have Robophobia, um, which is, is, is a good story. Did enjoy that one, because um, I'm a big fan of the Vok robots. And we have Recorded Time, an anthology release. 
Then we have the Doomsday Quatrain, which I believe is not very good. Then we have the House of Blue Fire. The Silver Turk, one of my favourite Ape Doctor audios. It is a brilliant story. I um, absolutely love it. Then we have Witch from the Well. Uh, then we have the Army of Death, again, one of my first big finished stories. Curse of Davros, brilliant story. Really recommend that one. Fourth Wall. Then we have Warrior and Isle, which is, is pretty good. Emerald Tiger is a story I really want to give it, give it a go and give it a listen. Um, the Jupiter Conjunction, quite a forgotten uh, big finished story. The Butcher of Brisbane, which is a fantastic story, very bleak. Uh, Protect and Survive, again, a very bleak, dealing with sort of radio uh, active nuclear fallout. Um, then we have Black and White. Then Gods and Monsters, which is a fantastic story. I love it. It's just proper Seventh Doctor to me. Burning Prince, amazing. I love that story. It's very, very good. Very good indeed. The Akron Pulse, um, which is decent. Then we have Shadow Heart. Then we have A Thousand One Night, which is a very good little anthology. The Wrong Doctors, where we see the Sixth Doctor Big Finish version and the TV Sixth Doctor meet. Um, the story's not brilliant, but you buy it for the two six doctors meeting, and it's the sort of introduction to Mel, I believe, from memory. Spaceport of Fear, not too keen on that one, I'll be honest. Seeds of War, it's good, but it could have been. A, I kind of expected a little bit more from it because it's the Sith Doctor and the Eminence, which is a little bit. Mm. Eldrad must die, brilliant story, I love it. Lady of Mercia, Prisoners of Fate, um, Persuasion, I love, I love it. It's a great little story that is. Then we have Starlight Robbery, I'd say part three and four when the actual story kicks in. And Dalek Among Us is a great story. Um, it's a little great story and it has a cliffhanger and I really want to know how they are going to resolve that cliffhanger. We have the 1963 trilogy now with Fanfare for the Common Men, the Space Race, uh, the Assassination Games, the Afterlife which is the continuation from Gods and Monsters and has one of the best Seventh Doctor performances there. Antidote for Oblivion, I really do like, and it kind of links back to Mission to Magnus, Broad of Eris, love it, brilliant story for Flip. Then we have Scavenger, Moonflesh, which isn't very good from what I've heard, Tomb Ship, I did enjoy, Masquerade, um, I started listening to it, but I never finished it, Breaking Bubbles and Other Stories, Revenge of Swarm, pretty good story, Mask of Tragedy, then we have Signs and Wonders, then we have The Widow's Assassin, which is a brilliant story, really did enjoy that one. The Masters of Earth, I really recommend it. It's a great story, and if you're not a fond of the Sixth Doctor, this story will absolutely sell you on Colin Baker as the Doctor. The Rani Elite is a pretty good story. Mistfall, I really do like. It's a nice little sequel to, um, for full, to Full Circle. Uh, Equilibrium, really good little story that is. Entry Plague um, is a great story. It's the last story for Old Anissa, and it's brilliant. Um, the Defectors, um, not too keen on that one. Last of the Cybermen, which I did enjoy. Secret History, very good story. That is really just capture 60s Doctor Who. We Have the Daleks, brilliant. That's a really good little jumping on point for people. The Warehouse, again, it's another brilliant story. And then we have Terror of the Sontarans, which I don't really remember much about it. I remember I didn't really enjoy it that much. We have Criss Cross, which is a wonderful story. Really enjoy that one. Pantherani, I, I enjoyed that on re-listen, actually. Shield of Jugton, really did enjoy that one. You Are the Doctor and Other Stories, uh, it's a brilliant story, You Are the Doctor, because it's basically a Decide Your Destiny story, and it's very clever. Really did enjoy that one. Waters of Amsterdam, Aquitaine, absolutely brilliant story, really do recommend that one. And the Peter Lee Massacre, the one what made me love the Fifth Doctor on audio. It's brilliant, it's magnificent, it's one of my favourite big finished stories of all time. And you'll obey me, I really did enjoy that story. Vampire of the Mind, um, yeah, it's a bit of an odd one that is, but I did enjoy it. Two Masters is just superb, it's brilliant. Ah, Life of Crime is just terrible. Um, it's poo. Um, yeah, don't like it. <laughs> Fiesta of the Damned, it's okay. I mean, this is when I start to lose interest in the Seventh Doctor. To me, the Ace and Mel stuff is when I really dwindle off the Seventh Doctor and I just... <sighs> we have the Maker of Demons, which I don't really like. Then we have Memory Bank and Other Stories, which is a pretty good set of anthology stories. And Order of the Daleks is brilliant. Absolute power? Absolutely not. It's not that great in my opinion. Quicksilver, it's good, but it's not the best release of 2016, in my opinion, in terms of main range. That's Stephanie Peter Lee Massacre. Aquatrain, Starman, very 80s story and has some good ideas. Contingency Club, um, seems more like a Jaguar like the story. Zoltis is brilliant, I love it. Alien Heart and Dalek Soul is a pretty solid release, in my opinion. Then Vortex Ice and Cortex Fire, it's pretty good. Then Shadow Planet is okay, and then World Apart is brilliant. High price of parking, that's decent, and the Blood Furnace is, is average in my opinion. We have the Silurian Candidate, which was a very good release. So we have my favourite release from the 2017 main range, Time in Office. It's Doctor who does a thick of it, and it's brilliant. Behemoth, I'm not too keen on it. Um, we have the Middle, which is very good. Static, it was compared to be the new Chums of Midnight. 
yeah, it's not that good. Episode one's brilliant, but the rest of the story didn't really land it for me. Kingdom of Lies, it's decent. Then Ghost Walk is fantastic. Serpent in the Silver Mask is brilliant. Heliax Rift, it's it's good. Lure of the Nomad is a very good story. It's a it's one of those ones that you think you've heard the story before, but it's completely different. Iron Bright is wonderful. It's one of my favourite releases from 2018's main range. But an hour of a Cybermen you need in your life is just superb. It is amazing. It is brilliant. Red Planet is very good. It's very much like a season 25 style story. It's very good. But Dispossessed, I'm not too keen on it. Um, Quantum Possibility Engine feels like a very old Big Finish release. It feels like a sort of an early Big Finish release, which I do like. Uh, Warlock's Cross um, is the end of the Unit trilogy. What well, kickstarted in Heliax Rift and Hour of a Cybermen. It's a pretty good conclusion in my opinion. I did enjoy it because you know I feel like to enjoy Warlock's Cross, you need to understand Klein as a character. Um, Muse of Fire, a lot of fun. It's for some Doctor and Iris Wild Time. It's brilliant. Hunting Ground is very good, very much like uh, Woman Who Fell to Earth in a way, um, it has similarities to that. Um, Devil in the Mist, I have reviewed it, um, so check out that review. Again, I have reviewed Black Fur's in Power Game, and Chameleon Empire, and the Monsters of Gokrok, and Moons of Volpana I haven't reviewed yet, um, so I'll save my thoughts for that review, and Alien, in, uh, an Alien Werewolf in London, and we have the most recent release, Memories of a Tyrant. Moving on to the Lost Stories, we have the Nightmare Fair, which I love part one, but part two it does go downhill. For me, Mission to Magnus is pretty good. Leviathan, again, episode one's brilliant, but then kind of lets itself down. All of the time, guilty pleasure for me. I did enjoy that one. Paradise 5 is pretty good. I did enjoy that one with Alex McQueen being in it, uh, but not as the master. Um, we have the point of entry, which is a very good story. Song of Magatra, um, pretty good story. I did enjoy that one. Then Macross, I did really like. Then we have the first Doctor's Lost Story Boxer, which is on my listen list because I've heard nothing but good things about it. Then we have the second Doctor Lost Story box set. Then we have season 27, Thin Ice, which is which is okay. Uh, Crime of Century, that's good. And probably my favourite of the bunch is Animal, which is a very nice and very good. Then we have Earth Aid. Then we have The Elite, which I recommend. It's a brilliant story. It's amazing. Believe the hype of that story. Hexagora, um, pretty good. Uh, then we have Children of Seth. Guardians of Prophecy is amazing. Power Play, it's okay. And then First of Tarns is is decent. Um, and then we have Masters of Luxor there. Then moving on to the last few lost stories, we have the Rose Mariners, which I did enjoy. I thought it was a very good story. The Dark Planets. Then we have Queen of Time, which sort of links back to the Celestial Toymaker. Laws Red Planet, the Genesis of the Ice Warriors, one of my favourites. And then the Mega, the six-part Pertwee Epic, which is one of my favourite big finish stories of all time. It's amazing. Then we have the fourth Doctor Lost Stories box set, which is fantastic. The Foe from the Future is the strongest of the set and then the Valley of Death is wonderful as well. It's a really great box set, really do recommend that if you can find it for a cheap price. Then Real Time, that's good, Her Final Flight. Then we have Cryptobiosis. Then we have Return of the Daleks, which links back to the Dalek Empire series. Return of to the Web Planet, which I have reviewed, so if you want to hear my thoughts on that story, then check out that review in my Big Finish Review playlist. Return of the Crotons. The Four Doctors, it's good, but if I was to pick between the two subscriber specials, I would pick The Five Companions. I think it's a lot better story, and it's just a lot of fun. It's a great story, that. Trial of Valyard, that's another good story, and then Night of a Stormcrow is a very nice gothic Fourth Doctor tale. Starting off with the Fourth Doctor stuff now, we have Tom Baker at 80, which is wonderful. I love it. It's a thing I often revisit, because it's just wonderful to have Tom Baker being the storyteller what he is. Destination Nerva, pretty good. Uh, the Renaissance Man, pretty good. I did enjoy that one. Wrath of Iceni, amazing, wonderful pure historical, um, dealing with Leela and Boudicca, wonderful. Energy of the Daleks, really great little jumping on point. I love it, I think, but it's a wonderful little story. Trail of the White Worm, I think it's one of the weakest, and so is the Asidon Adventure. Antimatter, I'm not too keen on, um, but Sander Life is one of my favourite Fourth Doctor adventures, and funny enough, it's a free parter. It's wonderful, and it continues in the war against the Larn. Just of Jalxar, amazing. Fourth Doctor and Romana one. Um, you know, just Jago and Life as well. It's amazing. It's just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. And it's just great having Jago flirting with Romana one. It's amazing. Phantoms of the Deep is a wonderful little story. And Dalek Contract is amazing. It'll build up and canine fighting Daleks. It's amazing. And the music is just so Dudley Simpson. And the final phase is a great conclusion to series two. My favourite of the fourth Doctor adventures. King of Sontar. I really did enjoy that one. Uh, it follows on from the King of Sontar, um, which uh, starts off the fourth Doctor being Leela's teacher, which is a great little arc. Then we have the Crooked Man, which is fantastic. It's got a really great idea, and it's quite gruesome in places. The Evil One, 
it's quite good. Um, last of the Colophon, I did enjoy Destroy the Infinite. We have the Fourth Doctor versus the Eminence, which is pretty good. The Abandoned, I didn't really like that much. And Zygon Hunt, um, I thought it was pretty good. And we'll show you the vinyl later on in the video. Then we have Philip Hinchcliffe Presents, which is one of my favourite big finish box sets. It's amazing. Go and buy it if you can find it for a really good price. We have the x Longs, which is a sequel to Death to the Daleks, but really misuses Leela. Um, this would have been the perfect story for Leela, but it's not really used that well, in my opinion. Uh, the Darkness of Glass is just a very traditional Philip Hinchcliffe style story, and I love it. Rec Room for the Rocket Men is amazing, really good little story that is. Deathmatch is it's a kind of a continuation from Rec Room of the Rocket Men, but it's it's a, it's average. It's not that great. Suburban Hell I'm not too fond of. It's one of my least favourite Fourth Doctor adventures. Cloisters of Terror it's easy. Fourth Doctor reunite with uh, Liz Shaw's mom, and it's a brilliant little story. I really do like that. Fate of Kralos um, is a good little builder to return to Talos, which is wonderful. Um, it's a great little story, that is. Wave of Destruction, I love it. It's a great little story. We've got Romana and K9 being a DJ on a pirate radio station, and I cannot wait to get the vinyl of it, because it's going to be amazing. Uh, Labyrinth of Buddha Castle, one of my favourite Fourth Doctor adventures. Like I say, I love Doctor Who vampire stories. Uh, the Paradox Planet, which is a four-part story what continues in the Legacy of Time. Very Douglas Adams-esque. Dalry Ghouls, pretty good. Did enjoy that one. Then we have Trouble with Drax, which is amazing. You need to check that story out because it's a lot of fun and it's very clever with what it does. And that's all I'm going to say. But Shoot From History is, is not that great. And so is Casualties of Time. It's not the greatest of conclusions for Series 5. Beast of Kravenos, very good little start to Series 6. Eternal Battle, one of my favourite Fourth Doctor adventures. It's, it's amazing. It's brilliant. Silent Scream um, is great. I love it. K9 going across a motorway. Brilliant. Death Rass is very season 18 style. It's brilliant. It's amazing. Haunting of Malkin Place. Then we have Subterranea, probably the weakest of series 6. And the Mavellan Grave, pretty good. Then Skin of a Sleek. And then we have the Fifu Stole Time, which is a great little story for Romana. There we are. Moving on to the last few Fourth Doctor stuff. We have Series 7, Volume 1. Um, series 7 is probably my least favourite of the Fourth Doctor bunch, but it's still a good series. We've got a Sutek there. And then we have Series 8, which is probably my second favourite series. It's amazing. And I'm probably going to do one big massive review on 4th Doctor Series 8, it's brilliant. Um, so there's Volume 2. Then we have the comic adaptions, which I will review at some point, don't worry, I will get around to reviewing it because I really did enjoy that. Then we have the Genesis Chamber, part of the Philip Hinchcliffe Presents. And then we have the Helm of Awe, which again is a very good story, I did enjoy it. Moving on to the 8th Doctor now, we have Blood of the Daleks Part 1 and part two what i've just recently reviewed so check out that review then we have horrors of glam rock which is a lot of fun uh phobos it's decent it's it's average and human resources part one and part two which i really want to give it a re-listen because i don't really remember enjoying it that much but i do want to give it another go dead london i really did enjoy max warp the parody to top gear brave new town a very surprising monster within it then we have the scholar sobek which is which is good uh grand theft cosmos brilliant little story that is as so i fell to earth my first EDA adventure and it's amazing. I love it. Sister of the Flame, pretty good. Um, and we have Vengeance of Morbius. We've got we have Orbis, which is a continuation from Vengeance of Morbius. Hot House, I remember really liking, and Beast of Warlock is quite an underrated one. We're in Dawn, really did enjoy that one. The Scapegoat is it's a story what you think um, you know all about, but really it plays a few little surprising twists. The Eight Truths, and we have the World Wide Web, and Earthly Child. Then we have Death in Blackpool, which is quite an emotional story. Situation Vacant, the Eighth Doctor trying to find a new companion. We have Nevermore, which I really do like. And then we have Booker Kells, which is a nice little historical. Then we have Demos, which is a brilliant story. Really do like that, and it continues in Resurrection of Mars. Then we have Resurrection of Mars. Then we have Relative Time, which is a nice little uh, episode in the TARDIS. Then we have Prisoners of the Sun, which is kind of your classic Eighth Doctor adventure, which I'm not going to get back into. I'm just going to leave it there. Lucy Miller and to the death, amazing, um, but do not listen to this straight away because it's, it's a story that will make you cry. Um, then we have the further adventures of Lucy Miller, which is very, you know, brand new, and I will put between series one and two eventually. I just had it on the shelf here, um, waiting to be reviewed, so I'll get around to that eventually. Then we have Dark Eyes, one of my favourite box sets. It's amazing, it's brilliant. Then we have Dark Eyes 2, um, which is good, and then Dark Eyes 3, probably the weakest of the Dark Eyes series. We have Dark Eyes 4, a satisfying conclusion. Doom Coalition 1 starts off so well, but then it falls behind. Doom Coalition 2, not very good at all. Doom Coalition 3, probably the best of the series. Then Doom Coalition 4 is pretty good at wrapping it all up. Then Ravenous 1, not too keen on that box set, but then we have Ravenous 2, which is the 
one of the best Eighth Doctor box sets since Dark Eyes one is really the Eighth Doctor back on form. Um, it's brilliant. I love it, especially the John Dorney two-parter. Then we have Ravenous Free, which is a pretty good box set, especially companion. Then we have the Eighth story. Doctor Time War box set one, volume two, which is a lot better in my opinion. Then we have Only the Monstrous, which is a pretty good box set. Infernal Device is my favourite of the War Doctor series. Agents of Chaos. Then we have the Casualties of War. Then we have Classic Doctor's New Monsters Volume 1, which is a very good set. But I personally prefer Volume 2. Uh, I think Volume 2 is a much better set, in my opinion. But they're both brilliant sets. Definitely recommend the Classic Moving Doctor's on to one of my favourite ranges, the Companion Chronicles with Frostfire. Enemy of the Daleks. The Bluetooth, which I, I love. I've got to get a bit of soft spot for that one. The Beautiful People. Mother Russia. Old Soldiers, which is, which is a good story for the Third Doctor and Brigadier. Uh, the Doll of Death, which um, it's very good, it's a very good story actually, I did enjoy that one. Empathy Games, we have Home Truths, which is brilliant, I really do recommend that one. The Darkening Eye, then we have The Transit of Venus, Magician's Oath, Mahogany Murders, the pilot episode for Jay Gwen Lightfoot, really do recommend that one. Listen to this before you listen to Series 1 of Jay Gwen Lightfoot and you'll have an absolute blast because it has the main villain from Series 1 within this. Uh, and it's, it's amazing, it's a brilliant companion chronicle, The, Sta the Steelers of Safe. The Drowned World, um, again, another good story. The Glorious Revolution, Prisoner of Peladon, uh, The Paralysis Effect, The Suffering, one of the rare two um, disc companion chronicles, The Emperor of Eternity, pretty good um, audio in my opinion, uh, Shadow of the Past, The Time Vampire, Solitaire, brilliant. Uh, then we have The Guardian of the Solar System, Perry and the Piscon Paradox, amazing, one of the best companion chronicles, and it's just a lot of fun by Neff Fountain, brilliant story. Perpetual Bond, the first story in the Oliver Harper trilogy, and it's amazing, very 1960s style story. The Centaurs of a New Dawn, uh, Feral's Folly, um, and then we have Cold Equations, which is quite a bleak and harsh story. Tales from the Vault, a good little companion chronicle. The Rocket Men, brilliant. And then we have The Many Deaths of Joe Grant, which is one of my favourite companion chronicles. We have Find and Replace, which is just a beautiful story. Invasion of East Space, Quinnis, which I have reviewed. First Wave, the last story in the Oliver Harper trilogy. Beyond the Ultimate Adventure, which isn't meant to be very good. The Anachronauts is brilliant. Uh, the Slation Gambit, brilliant, love it. Binary, very good, did enjoy that one. The Wanderer, the Jigsaw War, very uh, experimental story and uh, I love it. Uh, the Rings of Akira, good story. Time Museum, good story for Ian Chesterton. The Last Post, probably my favourite companion chronicle. It's beautiful, I have reviewed it. So yeah, it's just amazing, love it. We have Return of the Rocket Men. The Flame of Cadiz, brilliant story um, where we see Ian meets Sir Francis Drake. It's a really good story, really did enjoy that one. I could really picture that being a 60s story. The Scorchies, I really want to review this because it's just bonkers and it's brilliant. It's amazing. Library of Alexandria, The Apocalypse Mirror, The Council of War, then we have Mastermind, then we have The Alchemists, Upstairs, Ghosty Machine, I have reviewed and it is really good. The Beginning, I quite like it. The Dying Light, that's okay. Luna Romana, um, the last story in the Quadra Gestoin uh, trilogy, what kickstarts in the beginning. The Sleeping City, which is quite nice, dealing with the aftermath of Ian and Barbara leaving the TARDIS. Uh, and then we have, what do we have next? We have Starborn, the Lady Gaga one. Um, no, the Big Finish equivalent. Uh, then we have the War to End All Wars, the Elixir of Doom, and then we have the First Doctor Companion Chronicle, yeah, uh, the Second Doctor Companion one. Chronicle box of Volume 1. Then we have Volume 2, which is brilliant for the first Doctor, amazing box set, really do recommend that. Then we have Volume 2 for the second Doctor. Then we have the Companion Chronicle, the specials. Then we have the 11th Doctor Chronicles, which I will get around to reviewing at some point. Then we have Domain of the Vord, which is brilliant, love it. Uh, the Doctor's Tale is just magical, I love it. Bounties are serious, which is pretty good in ordinary life. The Yes Men, amazing, love it. Forsaken, brilliant story, love it. Black Hole, not too keen on. Um, the ISOS Network's very much like a target novelisation. I did enjoy that one. The Age of Endurance is okay. Uh, Fifth Traveller, not too fond of it. Uh, the Ravelli Conspiracy, brilliant, pure historical. One of my favourite first Doctor audios. And same with the Sontarans, brilliant audio. Then we have the Night Witches, which is a brilliant, pure historical. The Outliers, very 1960s style, love it. Morton Legacy, that's good. And so is Wreck of the World. I have done an overview video on Series 4 and Series 5. Dalek Occupation of Winter is brilliant, An Ideal World again, brilliant, Entanglement, probably the weakest of the series, and Crash of UK 210 is brilliant, it's a very good story for Vicky, Short Trips, we have The Toy, uh, Short Trips Volume 1, Volume 2, 
volume 3 and volume 4 and I do have some more on my phone. Dr. Adventures volume 1, then we have volume 2 which has a brilliant story, Transcendence of Ephros. Volume 3, volume 4 which is superb, love it. And then we have volume 5 which is one of my recent big finish reviews. So yeah, then we have the 5th Dr. Adventures box set which is brilliant, iterations of Iron Psychodrome are wonderful. First Dr. Adventures volume 1, um, Destination Wars I wasn't too keen on but the Great White Hurricane I love. And then we have volume 2 and then if we just get volume 3 which is there. So there's there's volume 3 hopefully you can see it, there we go. We have the War Master, only the good which is one of the best, probably the best box of the series so far. Master of Callus, which is a very good box set. Then we have the newest one which is the Rage of the Time Lords. When the range is finished in December I'll do an overview of the box sets and you know go from my least favourite to my favourite. Then we have Dalek Empire, Invasion of the Daleks, the Human Factor, Death to the Daleks, then we have Project Infinity, Dalek Empire, very good uh, spin-off. Then we have Dalek War Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and then we have Chapter 3 there, and then we have Chapter 4. Then we have Series 3, the Exterminators, the Healers, the Survivors, the Demons, the Warriors, the Future, and then Series 4 which is Part 1, and then we have Part 2, and then Part 3. Then we have part four, and I believe Dalek Empire is returning with the Time War. The Idavros series, we have Idavros Innocence, we have Idavros Purity, Corruption, and then we have Guilt, and then we have the Sarah Jane Smith spin-off, which if you're expecting the Sarah Jane adventures, you'd be wrong. Um, we have Comeback, then we have the Teo Connection, Ghost Town, then we have the Test of Nerve, uh, Mirror Signal Maneuver, then we have Buried Secrets, which is the start of Series 2, I believe. Then we have Snowblind, which I look forward to listening to. And then we have the Fatal Consequences, and then Dreamland. And then we have the Cyberman series, so we have Scorpius, which is probably my favourite of Series 1. Fear, uh, Conversion, and then we have Telos, and then we have the very rare Cyberman 2, which I personally think Cyberman 2 is better than Series 1. It's a brilliant series, Cyberman 2. Love it. It's a brilliant box set. Moving on to one of my favourite big finish ranges, and that is of course Jaguar and Lightfoot. So we have Series 1, which is a good little opener. Series 2, which is one of my favourites. Then we have Series 3 with Leela. And then we have Series 4 with a Six Doctor. Then we have the two Voyage stories, Voyage to Venus, and then Voyage to the New World. Then Series 5, again, one of my favourites. I love it, Jaguar and Lightfoot in the 1960s. Then we have Series 6, which is pretty good. And then we have Series 7 with a sort of Chimes of Midnight style story. Then we have Series 8 with Jago and Lightfoot and the Scorchies, which uh, is a lot of fun, as you can see, and quite scary. Oh yes. We have Jago and Lightfoot at Series 9. Then we have Jago and Lightfoot and Strax, which is brilliant. I love it. Then we have Series 10, Series 11. Then we have Series 12, which is probably my third favourite from the series. Then we have Series 13. And then we have Jago and Lightfoot Forever, which is beautiful. It's a really great way to close the line off. We have Benjamin and Baxter, then we have Unit, Time Heals, then we have Snakehead, then we have The Longest Night, and then we have The Wasting, Unit Dominion, and then we have the new series of units, so we have Unit Silenced, Unit Assembled, then we have Cyber Reality, and then we have Unit Revitalization. Then we have Doctor Who The Stage Plays, The Ultimate Adventure, we have Jenny, The Doctor's Daughter, which was an okay box set. Then we have River Song, Die River, River Song Series 3, which is probably my favourite of the range, it's brilliant. Uh, then we have Series 4, then we have Series 5 with all the Masters, and then we have Doctor Who Unbound, we have Old Mortality, uh, The Sympathy of the Devil, which is brilliant, uh, 4 Fathom 5, uh, He Jester Scars, then we have Exile, and then we have Storm Angels, and then we have Masters of War, which is great, I love that story, really good. Moving on to the Gallifrey series now, so we have uh, Weapon of Choice, then we have Square One, then we have The Inquiry, um, Blind Eye, have Lies, then we have Spirit, then we have Pandora, then we have Insurgency I think it is, then we have Imperiatrix, then we have Fractures, then we have Warfare, then we have Appropriation, then we have Mind Bomb, then we have Panacea and then we have Gallifrey Time War Volume 1. Moving on to Torchwood now, we have Knight of the Fendal, which is brilliant, um, I have reviewed it. And then we have The Green Life, which again I have reviewed. Then we have Sync, which is very much like Boomtown. Then we have uh, Sargasso, which I think the idea is really good, but the story doesn't really pay out for me. It doesn't really do much with the idea, uh, but I love the concept. Then we have Serenity, 
which is a prequel, or well, no, I think it's a sequel to the Tortured episode Sleepers. Then we have The Lives of Captain Jack Volume 2, which I need to review because I, I have some interesting thoughts to say on this box set. So there we go, there's my Tortured selection. Moving on to the New Adventures now, we have the 7th Doctor New Adventures Volume 1, which I have reviewed, and it's a brilliant box set. I love that one. Novel adaptions, we have Love and War. We have the Theatre of War. We have All Consuming Fire. Nightshade, which is brilliant. And Original Sin, that's pretty good. And Cold Fusions is amazing. I love it. Then we have the New Adventures of Bernie Summerfield, Volume 1. Then we have Volume 2. Then we have Volume 3, which I love. I think that that's a brilliant box set. Then we have Volume 4, which I have reviewed, um, Ruler of the New Universe. Moving on to the Big Finish vinyl, so we have Energy of the Daleks, we have Infamy of Zaros, Cold Vengeance, we have Zygon Hunt, then we have the Creeping Death, and I have ordered Death and the Queen. Now onto the final section of the collection is the Limited Edition, so we have Light at the End, we have the Worlds of Doctor Who, then we have the Novel Adaptions Volume 1 containing the Romance of Crime and the English Way of Death. We have the Novel Adaptions Volume 2 containing Damaged Goods and Well-Mannered War, which is a brilliant story. Love the Well-Mannered War, the Sick Doctor Last Adventure, and the Tenth Doctor Adventures Volume 1. We have the Tenth Doctor Adventures Volume 2, the Tenth Doctor Adventures Volume 3, and what better way to close this Big Finish collection to close with the Legacy of Time, the 20th Anniversary Special. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this collection uh, video for 2019. Um, I'm absolutely shattered. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much for watching this Big Finish collection and uh, yeah, goodbye.